Hello, so this is a burnishing demonstration. Here's a smoke fired pot that's been burnished. The burnishing happens in the greenware stage and then it gives you this result in the pit fire or smoke fire that we're going to do. So black is just from smoke in the sawdust type firing. This is more of the pit fire style here. And this one is a good example of a burnished area where it's shiny and the color tone and values are better. This area here is unburnished and you can get a contrast between those different areas. So you don't necessarily have to burnish the entire piece. You can design in places that are unburnished. The bottom of this piece has more color from the pit fire. So these are the finished examples. So to burnish, you need to do it in two stages. So the first stage is done at the uh, hard, leather hard stage. So a little bit firmer than when you would like trim a pot on the potter's wheel. So I'll show you what that stage is in just a moment. I have my piece wrapped in plastic because I don't want it to dry out. It, I got it just right. So the other thing you need to burnish is a tool. And so I have a whole bunch here on the table and I'll, I'll show you examples of using each of them and you're going to find your own tools because you don't need a special tool you'll find something firm to press into the surface to burnish so i was just demonstrating it a few minutes ago and i was using all different tools so you see a bunch of areas that are shiny those are the areas that are burnished i haven't been very methodical about where i did it i kind of was just randomly picking spots and i need to go over the whole surface and do it this part here i went around the whole band so you can see there but this is unburnished on the bottom so the bottom is actually a good place to test for firmness. So I'm gonna take my finger and push on this and it does not give at all. So I cannot make a mark unless I resorted to my fingernail, like marking it. So this is hard leather hard, but it's not bone dry. It hasn't turned that whitish color yet. And if I put it up to my cheek, I still feel a little bit of uh, coolness from the water content. So this is, the perfect stage for burnishing. Here's another one that's not quite ready. So this is a good thing to see as well. This one, if I push on it, I can actually leave a dent. See my fingers? <laughs> I left a big dent there. That's too soft to burnish. Even though it is leather hard, it's not that true firm hard leather hard. So that needs to sit out a little bit longer until it's ready. So I'll use this one and then I'll show you on that one too to, to show you what can go wrong if you're too early. Let's do the good one first. So burnishing tools are things that are smooth and hard. So this is a, like a polished stone, some sort, looks like obsidian maybe. This is a little glass blob that was flat on the bottom and round on the top. Those are really good. The backside of a spoon can work really nicely because you can hold it in your hand like that and push on it. I was even using this like plastic lighter. It's hard enough and smooth enough that it did do a job, do the job. This is a tool you probably have in your kit. It's a flexible rib and you can bend it and push on that surface. And then I have a couple light bulbs. I found this little one it was really good and that's my so in, I like uh, glass myself, glass beads and little light bulbs. So um, let's start with the one that most people prefer, which is the polished stone. So if you have one of these, you might try it. If you don't have one, try something else. And burnishing is just simply polishing the surface. So you want to put some pressure down and you want to gently glide it onto that hard leather hard surface and try to overlap each line because you will get very very small lines the harder it is the less lines you'll get and the best uh, burnishes have like almost no lines at all but sometimes the lines can actually be nice too they can give you some energy in the piece so you can see there where i burnished it with that tool that worked pretty good this is also small and can get into little nooks and crannies and i can push on it there so if you use like a regular marble, it's really hard to hold on to. So you need something you can push on there. So those are, those are kind of my preferred burnishing stones. However, if you want to just try something in your kit and you have a big surface, you can use 
the bent side of that. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> They're sharp too. Um, just watch what I'm doing. So you put, you roll it like that and you can, it works good on real uh, convex surfaces. Just don't catch that edge. Okay, so that got into that corner there. A similar thing is the spoon, uh, which may be a little bit better because you don't have to have it fly, fly across the room at you. Uh, and so you can just push on that and just make sure you don't catch the edge of the spoon. And you can use, like, you can get into little areas of the tip of the spoon like this and bigger areas with broader strokes. The spoon might leave, or any of the metal might leave a darker surface. That generally is not a problem. I've seen it show up a tiny bit sometimes, but usually it, it doesn't show up in the firing at all. It definitely won't show up on this red clay. If you have B-Nix, you might want to choose a non-metal uh, surface if you want it really pristine. Let's check the lighter on the top here. So the lighter is plastic. It's not as hard, but it's doing a pretty good job. So one of the things with burnishing is that I'm looking real closely. I'm using the Navajo wheel clay, and the Navajo wheel clay has grog in it. It has little tiny specks of white fired clay. And the first kind of job of this burnish, step one, is to push the grog in. If you're doing this and it really scratches the surface, you've actually let your piece dry out too much. And if that's the case, you normally see it because it starts to turn that white color of bone dry. If it's dried out too much, you need to mist it down with like a spray bottle or put it under plastic with a damp sponge near it so it can rehydrate a little bit and then you do it again later. Okay, last one is this small light bulb. Actually here, let me try the big light bulb first. I didn't try this one before. A lot of, actually, wow, that's pretty nice. It's, it's, it's about how it works on the surface and it's also about how you hold it in your hand. One thing is that you might want to get yourself comfortable and do, do it like this because it can be physically um, tiring and it's going to take a while. I, I have not been very um, methodical about where I'm doing it because I'm keep grabbing new things and showing you where if I was doing this uh, straight, I would pick one spot and I work my way around and not just random patches. But I can now spend some time after the video is done and go in and meet all those patches together. And uh, these would probably be my tools of choice, the, the, the polished stones. Now, if you... I mentioned if you get scratches, you're too late. If you're too early, you might get scratches too. So we poked on that and it was a little bit soft. It will kind of burnish, but it gouges it, leaves bad marks. So that's why it's no good. That's not good at all. So what I need to do is gently, gently burnish those out so I don't have a real big problem. Then later, when this is ready, then I can burnish over that surface again. So you can burnish it multiple times um, before it dries out, but don't you don't need to. One good burnish at this stage is usually sufficient, and you don't want to wait too long and try to burnish it for a second round or something. If it's dried out, then you get a scratch. So if you get a pretty decent burnish all the way around, you know, like I said, I got to spend some time. It takes me about 15, 20 minutes probably to do this whole thing. Then, um, then I'm done with that stage one. So I'm going to spend some time. I'm going to burnish this whole thing. I got all these sculptural areas to deal with. Then I would uh, let this dry out completely when I'm done with this burnish. And then next time, I'll show you stage two, which is a bone dry burnish using a little bit of oil. So that'll come next. Okay, thanks.